go wild. His name is John Hastings. Start some clapping down here. Start some clapping down here. Build it up, build it up, build it up. Start some clapping. Clap properly, Chris, you motherfucker. Build it up. Please welcome Mr. John Hastings. Okay, good. Thank you for, for clapping until you saw me. <laughs> it's giving me a lot of confidence on how this is going to go. Yeah, next day. Now this fucking guy. It's a fun, fun, awkward way to start the show. Don't worry, guys. I'm good in an awkward situation. I've been in a lot of awkward situations. Once I was in a lift and someone farted and two people claimed responsibility. <laughs> If I got through that, I can get through this. <laughs> I got uh, I got hit by a car in November. <laughs> what a terrifying laugh that was. <laughs> Just one lone. <laughs> Are you a Roger Moore era James Bond villain? For those of you not laughing, that joke wasn't for you. <laughs> well played. I think that person's so drunk they don't know I was talking to them. That's a rough opponent to tangle with. Make an enemy of someone who doesn't even know they're your enemy. But I know. Where was I? Oh yeah, being good at comedy. So... Thank you, this section. <laughs> the rest of you learn from them that some of this is just jokes, as opposed to you guys who are treating it like it's a TED Talk for the damned. <laughs> anyway, so I got hit by a car. Maybe I'd... Oh yeah, we're still doing that bit. <laughs> that person's laugh notwithstanding. I will, I will soldier the fuck on. Got hit by the car. I don't know what your people's game is, but I'm excited to see it. Now here's the, here's the thing with getting, me getting hit by a car is I kind of feel like I deserve it. Not that I deserve it. It's just that like I don't look good riding a bike. Like I assume you look fucking exceptional. You got all the fucking gear and you don't even look like a cunt wearing those tight shorts. <laughs> yeah, but me, I just look like a guy who's been caught drinking and driving so many times, he now has to ride a bike. <laughs> you know, other people, like even any exercise, I don't look inspirational. I see other people exercising and they look fucking inspirational. The gym I go to, there's a, there's a personal trainer there. She's my favorite, such an inspiration. She is such an inspiration to me. She is 75 years old and she is still helping people feel good. She's an inspiration to me as it inspires me to save money and work hard so I don't need a fucking job at her fucking age. <laughs> it's a very mean joke, but you guys don't know her, so fucking laugh along. <laughs> anyway, so I got to, I'm hit by the car and I'm just lying on the road. Now, I don't remember getting hit by the car. I do remember seeing the car that hit me. It paused, a very familiar pause, a pause that was, you've all had in your life, usually at a grocery shop like a Tesco's <laughs> using the uh, automated checkout kiosk. You know that moment where the screen asks you uh, how many bags have you used? <laughs> <laughs> and you, uh, you briefly pause as you look at your seven bags <laughs> and then you hit zero bags. <laughs> It was a hit and run, is what it was. <laughs> Drove away. Now, I don't remember getting hit by the car, but I know I was hit by the car. It's that weird thing with memory. Certain things you don't remember, so you don't know. Like locking the front door of your house. None of you remember locking the front door of your house before you came here, so you don't know if you locked the front door of your house, which is why the entire front row just looked at their fucking feet like, oh, fuck, the front door's open. <laughs> That's where we left the Coke. This is trouble. here, <laughs> which explains a lot of the errant nostril play from boom, 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 but not you, and you guys seem like you're on a date, so may I say, sir, what a caddish move on your part. 
having a blizzard in your nose and not inviting her to make a snowman as well. I can't believe I made cocaine seem so wholesome just there. Ecstasy. Hmm. I remember reading about the 90s as well. <laughs> yeah, certain things you don't know because you don't remember. Other things you never remember, but you still know. Like, I never remember wiping my ass after a huge shit. But I always know that I have. I have never found myself thinking, oh my God, the front door is unlocked and... Who knows if I've ever wiped myself? <laughs> no, I know. I fucking know. I know, and I pushed this to the bounds. The bounds of reason. Once in university, I got fucking ossified drunk. Like, as drunk as this fucking guy who's been asleep since I've been on fucking stage. <laughs> oh, man. I've had heckles before, but I've never had someone just, mmm, so soothing. <laughs> His comedy is like a nice cup of tea. Not too hot, just a little bit of milk. <laughs> what were you dreaming about, Puddin? <laughs> Me? How alarming. You weren't awake when I walked on stage. You just love my voice? Thank you. What a lovely compliment that was. You must be an estate agent. <laughs> Able to turn a shitty situation into something that makes you look still bad, but not that bad. That's worth it. Oh. It's one of the many services we provide here. <laughs> we'll wake you up when you fall asleep. We'll have you fall asleep again and draw cocks on you. <laughs> we'll plant a bunch of cocaine on you and leave you in the alley for the police to find. Are you guys all holding drugs? You guys all reacted being like, plant? No, no, I'm holding, mate. It's after midnight on a Friday in London. We're mostly cocaine. It shows the wholesomeness. This section all laughed. You guys going, what, what, what is he referring to? Why do you think people are so peppy when you walk outside? It's not an espresso martini. Hey, John, what happened in university when you got super drunk? I'll fucking tell you. <laughs> oh, you thought that bit was done? No, we are still within the first joke. <laughs> Many would think at this point in the set we'd be on to joke three or four. Mm -mm, not the way I do it. <laughs> I got so fucking drunk, I ended up taking a shit in my laundry hamper. <laughs> yeah, some of you were shocked. Imagine living that as opposed to hearing about it. But here's the thing, my friends, I still had the presence of mind in my alcoholic face fog to still grab toilet paper. That's when I learned there was a problem because I saw the very clean toilet and realized, oh no. <laughs> now some of you may need to sober up quickly later on. Some will tell you coffee or food or water. No, you need to be sober in a moment. Here's what you do. You get a turd and you put it somewhere in your house. <laughs> now just make sure you don't know where it is. <laughs> now, to answer your next question, I threw the hamper and its contents away because we live in a society. And a society has rules. And I feel the biggest and most important of those rules is if you pee on something, then it's yours. If you shit on something, then it's no one's. <laughs> Using this logic, I uh, technically own Leicester Square. And a woman named Heidi technically owns me. Here's what happened with that. I was sleeping with a woman named Heidi, right? And we were, uh, we were having uh, sex, penis, vagina style. 
Yeah. That's not how we do it in Canada. We, we don't think sex is just clapping our hands once. It's a very cold country. You can't get your bits out. So sex to my people is just, you're pregnant. <laughs> And she's, uh, she's on top, and, uh, and she just looks me in the, uh, in the face, right? And she goes, uh, I want to try something. Now, I remember being positive about it and saying something nice like, sure. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it was that. I'm not good at talking during sex. Like, some people are good at talking during sex. Like you, sir. I feel that you are good at talking during sex. You are wearing hiking shoes and you're not 55. You have a confidence I can only fucking dream of. <laughs> I am not good at talking. Anything in the sexual oeuvre, I'm bad. At, like one time I was on the N29 night bus and I, and, I, and I was with a woman and she turned to me and she went, I want to get back to my place. I'm going to go down on you. And it was a very chaste but dirty thing to say. So for some stupid reason, I decided to respond with, in a Lawrence Olivier accent. Indeed you are. <laughs> what the fuck? That turned her vagina into a litter box. <laughs> How compassionate of you guys. That was really sweet. Ha! Ha! <laughs> Full range of human emotions right there. Happy, sad, concerned, depressed. Appreciative. <laughs> so I definitely said something. I want to remember it being at something like sure. There is a part of me that remembers saying okie dokie. <laughs> Artichokey. Where did you fucking get a fucking pinball? And why did you fucking throw it at me, s Lord of the Slumber? <laughs> did you just make a? F Don't fucking throw the ping pong. Oh. What? What? Where the fuck am I? <laughs> did you just bring something back from your subconscious? How fucked up were you? I made nothing, something. Why are you fucking kicking it at me? Get the alchemist to hold on to it. <laughs> are you here with friends or are you just by yourself now that you got kicked out of Hogwarts? <laughs> it's an interesting explanation. Not the answer to my question at all. I said, are you here with people? And he went, I just found it on the floor. Again, a damning indictment of my comedy that someone is examining the floor. <laughs> well, I am quite frankly ripping this gig. Not a new asshole, but I'm treating its original asshole with respect. Yeah. Thank you, your applause is both deserved and actually, if anything, a bit late. <laughs> Now, where, where on the floor did you find the ping pong? I don't know why I'm fucking going further down this rabbit hole. It's like watching a really shit movie, and I look, and, it, and it's a 90-minute movie, and I'm at minute 50, and I'm like, well, we're more than halfway done. So where did you find the ping pong ball, my friend? Under that guy's chair. We move to you, my friend. <laughs> Do you have any reason to have, to have brought a ping pong ball? Can you say ping pong ball anymore in these, you can? I'm, listen, I'm all for political correctness. So even if you can still say it, I'm gonna move to table tennis. Cause even if ping pong is politically correct, it doesn't seem like it is. Like, there's a cup here. What? Who, who? That's yours. Yeah. I, don't worry, mate. I'm, I'm pretty sure the ping pong ball wasn't yours. I think he probably found it at some sort of weird shithead table tennis tournament. Um, so you saw the ping pong ball. I mean table tennis ball. Listen, the ball identifies as a ping pong ball. <laughs> I understand that the correct verb for it is table tennis, but I've been speaking to the ball's owner. 
I know you're not supposed to say owner anymore, the ball's father. <laughs> so he saw it on the ground and he decided to pick it up and then just throw it at my shoe while I was, I was fucking spinning gold with my fucking <laughs> words. Yeah. that. I got an applause break and then heard one person just go, there's a cunt on stage. <laughs> Sir, it's not every day that I'm, I have small sport implements tossed at me. <laughs> I'm going through a lot right now because <laughs> I've never seen someone so drunk and yet so confident in my entire life. <laughs> what is your name? Fucko. <laughs> Alex. And Alex, why do you think there was a table tennis ball on the floor? I planted it there. <laughs> what, what, what about any of this seems planned? I don't, I don't head out into Soho before the late show. I need a drunk fuck named Alex. Pardon me, do you have an indentation on your finger that shows that you have a signet ring, but you've come into town in London enough that you take it off? Right this way. Have you been drinking a Prosecco-based cocktail, but you tell people it's champagne? Perfect. Now, midway through my set, in a moment where I'm clearly trying to build to a crescendo so I can get off stage and get a fucking night tube and just go back home, I want you to throw the ball on my foot in a way that's just distracting enough that I have to address it. But not distracting enough that it warrants the rage I feel inside right now. Like if I had the implements, I would fucking chop your head off. And then I would fuck the wound. I don't have the implements, we're not going to do that. I've been to a lot of gigs. I've never said I'm gonna chop the head off and fuck the wound and have only one person go, do it. <coughs> well, this wasn't the set I was planning on doing. <laughs> a piece of advice for all of you. I think that piece of advice is this, is uh, live every day like it's your last day on earth. Live every day like it's your last day on earth. I do that, I live every day like it's my last day on earth, which is why I get up early every morning and try and cure Ebola. <laughs> it's a very strange joke. I wrote that joke on a very crowded bus. Shoulders and elbows all in my face and that joke popped into my brain and my mouth decided to celebrate by saying Ebola out loud. <laughs> and then I laughed for 30 seconds by myself. <laughs> if you want a seat on a crowded bus, that's the way to do it. Have a great night. See you later. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Hastings. What many of you don't realize is that when John was knocked over by a car, his paramedic... No, that's right. That's horribly... I don't, and I, I, he called you an estate agent as well. You can feel the whole room going, no, he's the paramedic. And then we all went, where the fuck did that ping pong ball come from? <laughs>